Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and today you're in for a treat. This is one of my absolute all-time favorite cooks on the Kamado Joe, which is beef ribs. And I'm doing a beef rib 101 on the Kamado Joe. Now I say 101 since we've tried a lot of things over the years. Low and slow versus hot and fast, wrap, paper wrap, foil boat, everything in between, and we've learned a bunch. And so rather than send you on a goose chase to go find all these different videos and make sense of what was the best in each one, I'm gonna pull all of the winners, the things that stood out and really made a difference in our game plan and pull that all into today's cook. And I recommend watching the video start to finish since it's gonna be weaved in all the way through. But if there's one section you are completely up to speed and familiar with, or you've seen one of my other 101s where I've covered something maybe that's uh, similar, I've put chapters down below so you can just skip to the section that's relevant for, to you. Now, I love beef ribs, and I think they're an amazing 101 for a couple reasons. One, we can cook these in a relatively short amount of time. Normally, they're six to seven hours on the grill, plus a couple hours rest. You're knocking these out in about eight hours, so you can get started in the morning, have them ready for dinner. The other reason I love beef ribs is they are incredibly forgiving. So they have nature's own heat shield. So we don't need foil boats. We don't need to worry about overdoing our bottom. So you can get away with a little bit of a hotter temperature, which is how I actually first realized that hotter cooks taste better, especially on a Kamado style grill where it's very energy efficient. You get away at 270 to 300 degrees and you realize the smoke just tastes that much better. Uh, and you don't have to worry about overdoing the bottom. And the other reason I love them, whether it's imagination or true, just that experience, the dino bone, uh, whether that actually adds anything or not in my mind, I think it does. It's just a great sort of overall cook experience. One to cook and more importantly, to enjoy. Absolutely love the flavor. So without further ado, let's get into everything you need to know in today's Beef Rib 101. Okay, so as you can see, I've already cleaned out our grill from our last cook. So I'm gonna add two pieces of smoking wood right on the bottom. Cover that up with what leftover charcoal we have. I'm doing that with the leftover charcoal because often as it breaks down, you get some smaller pieces which will help fill some of those gaps and give us some better coverage versus the fresh stuff you'll see in a second when we dump it right out of the bag. It's gonna be much larger in size. Now I shared a story on Instagram the other day showing opening a bag of charcoal and I got so many comments. Let me quickly show you how to open a stringed bag of charcoal really easily. Now I get asked all the time, what's the right way to open a stringed bag of charcoal, like this one from Fogo. And so the quick and easy way to do that is on every bag, you'll notice there's a short end and a long end. So we wanna find the short end and pull the short piece of string that's protruding here through that loop and then pull. It's easy as that. That's how you open a bag of charcoal. Now that we got our bag of charcoal open, let's just dump in some fresh charcoal. So this is what I was talking about, the larger pieces that won't exactly just sit right tight to the smoking wood. So we'll just place those. And I like to orient mine with a slight bias towards the back as that's the natural burn direction in a Kamado, as well as making sure I can see a little bit of that smoking wood on the bottom that I have charcoal pieces touching that as that's what we need for it to smolder properly. Okay, that looks great. So whether you're using lighter cubes, I would put one here and one towards the front, or if you're using something like I'm using the Grill Blazer Grill Gun, I wanna start a fire down and slightly front center. So if the middle point of the grill is right here, I'm starting right here, because again, I'm gonna go with the natural direction of the airflow. <laughs> looks good. As you can tell, I'm waiting till you see some of those coals starting to ash over white and they're glowing nice and red so that we're going to get some good combustion. We'll drop in the base of our slow roller, close it up. Bottom vents all the way open and top vents all the way open. Going to wait till we start to feel some heat in the dome. So while we're waiting for our grill to come up to temperature, I'm just going to cover up our smokeware drip pan with some foil. That'll just make cleaning this out at the end a little bit easier. And now we can get to work on adding the extra seasoning to our beef ribs. So for prepping these really beautiful looking beef ribs, I actually started yesterday with what's called the salt dry brine. So if you've never heard of that, this is just where we are putting our salt onto our protein a day in advance and giving that time for it to really help break down some of those tougher tissues and be absorbed all the way into the meat. And while this will draw out some moisture, overall it will help whatever you're cooking retain more 
uh, moisture and juiciness when it's all said and done. Now I've just done a brisket yesterday and so the reason I'm doing a deconstructed salt, pepper, garlic versus just mixing it all on like I've shared in some of my other one-on-one -on -one videos is because that taste yesterday is fresh in mind and I wanna know the difference here of just sticking with the salt brine overnight and then adding our additional garlic, pepper and using trough or any other binder that you like for your binder versus putting it all on and letting it sit in the fridge as one complete unit overnight tastes any different. And since beef rib and brisket are so close, actually I like beef rib maybe even a little bit better, it's my favorite, uh, I wanna see if I can tackle any difference when we get to the taste test portion. So let's glove up here and start to get to work on adding our binder, which I'm gonna start with the trough sauce, then add a little bit of pepper and garlic, get a meter probe and we'll be ready to go. Don't need too much, only a couple, couple drops should give us enough to spread out and give plenty of moisture content for our rub to adhere to. And this is expensive, so we don't wanna go through it all in one sitting. Before I cover that, look, check out the marbling styrations on this beef rib. This, <laughs> I can already tell this is gonna be good. I'm excited, we have to wait a couple hours. Okay, so next we're gonna hit it with some garlic. That looks good. And lastly, we're going to hit it with some fresh cracked black pepper. So I'm using the pepper cannon set to, I think, dial 22 on the bottom, which is giving me a really nice mesh for things like this. Just add some pepper. Okay, I think our beef ribs look great. Let's get a meter probe. And we'll go right here in the middle, trying to avoid the bones. Insert past the line that's on the probe. Make sure we're getting a good reading. Okay, so as you can see, temperatures really shot up in the time that it took to do our beef rib seasoning. And now I have heat in the dome. So I definitely want to close this, start working our dial down. We're going to come a little bit further, but for now, just while everything stabilizes, we add the cool components. I'm going to go to the sort of third line here on the control tower top and put the bottom draft door down to one finger. Okay, next we're going to add the extender of our slow roller. We've got some great looking combustion down there. Then our slow roller top, our divide and conquer rack, our X accessory rack. Now, if you don't have a slow roller, you have a series one or two, there's not space to do this in the double end rack. Instead, what you can do is you can put your deflector plates down in the low position and then put a pizza stone or a spare set of deflector plates if you happen to have those on your X accessory rack and it'll work just as well. Then our heat deflectors, our smokeware drip pan that we covered in foil a little bit earlier and our two cooking grids against the notches like so, so they don't move anywhere and let that stabilize. So we're approaching now 250 degrees, so about that 20 degrees out from where we want, anywhere from between 270 to 300 degrees, I think is a great temperature for today's beef ribs. We wanna start making that adjustment before we get there, because if we wait till we're 270 to 300 and then start to adjust, we're gonna have some carryover momentum and shoot past that, which when you're new, or at least when I was new, might tempt you to start fussing with your dial, and that's how we're gonna get into a yo-yo pattern with our temperatures. So right around 250, we're about 20 degrees short, we're gonna go and make our adjustment and I'm gonna to come to just about an eighth inch or so on the other side of this second line, lined up just on the left side of the A on our Kamado Joe control tower top. That should be great. And also since the smoke has turned to really sweet smelling wood smoke versus anything putrid, we're getting nice smoke. I think it's a great time to go ahead with that clear smoke, add our beef ribs to our Joe. Let's go right in the middle here. Looks good. Close that up, let those cook. So now that we have our beef ribs on, let me go over the game plan for today's cook. It's just after 9.30 in the morning here local time. And so a couple elements that we wanted to have come together. So first I already mentioned is that overnight dry brine. That is so critical on these large cuts, even down to something simple like a steak. It just really helps unlock that flavor. Next, we want to uh, use our method of getting some great smoke. So the double indirect is gonna help give us some smoke for that first few hours, but I want to supplement that as the cook goes on. One of the challenges in a Kamado style cooker with the fire on the bottom and a whole bunch of 
you know, deflector gears in the middle, it is not really accessible to add in another wood chunk mid cook. And so that's where the ash drawer hack, where we pull out the ash drawer, throw in a couple wood chips, about every hour or so will help keep some smoke rolling. Now, normally on something like a pork shoulder or a brisket, I would use the foil boat around the 180 degree mark, but beef ribs have nature's own foil boat built in. Those bones on the bottom are really going to help protect our meat on top. So we don't need the foil boat, but depending on how things look and if they're drying out, we may do a wrap in paper. That suits beef ribs perhaps better than anything else on the Kamado style grill. So that's maybe what we'll do. We'll check them as we get towards 180 degrees. And to help make sure that we don't get any drying out, the plan here is to spray about every hour or so. So I'm gonna use some apple cider vinegar diluted with water and just spray that about every hour to help make sure that we don't have any dry spots as well as just giving an, a nice moist surface for that smoke to adhere to. Later on in the day, when these are all ready, the plan is to put them in the cooler, let them rest for a couple hours, just like a brisket. Beef ribs are the same where sort of the minimum, you know, an hour, but even better if you can do two hours. Uh, and that two to four hour is a sweet spot. You can do a much longer rest, especially if you have something like an oven uh, and maybe get a little bit more, you know, performance or improvement out of your total cook. But the difference here is not, in my opinion, worth planning for that deliberately since we want these later today for dinner. So that's the game plan for today's cook. I'll rejoin you a little bit later on. We've got a couple more updates to share. Okay, our beef ribs have been on about two hours, so I'm gonna check them for the first time now. We've got our apple cider vinegar diluted with water, so it's about a half and half ratio, along with some apple wood chips. Let's come take a look, see if it needs some spray. And judging by the fact there's crystal clear, you wouldn't even know it's on smoke coming out of the control tower top, I think our wood chunks are consumed and we need to supplement some wood chips. All right, let's take a peek. Ooh. That's already looking pretty. Nothing looks too bad. I don't see any drying out that I'm concerned with, but to help some smoke adhere, that's what the spray is gonna help do, especially in the first you know, four hours of a smoke or so. So let's coat these with some spray. That looks good, close that up. Okay, now for the ash drawer hack. After a few hours of burning, you can see we've got some embers falling down. You can see some glowing in the front and the back. So that's where our coals are landing. So all I want to do is place a couple of chips where I see those glowing embers landing since that's where I know we're going to get great combustion. So I'll just sprinkle a few of those in. Put that back in, let it keep smoking. And return to one finger width to keep our temperatures nice and steady. Okay, our beef ribs are about four and a half hours in and they're just crossed the 180 degree Fahrenheit mark. Let's go take a look and see how that bark looks and decide whether or not we want to wrap these maybe in paper or just let them continue to ride and or if we wanna add a few more uh, smoking wood chips into our ash drawer. We'll pull that out and take a peek. Let's go take a look. All right, let's take a peek. Ooh, those are looking good. Here, let me just lean you forward a bit. So you can see the bones are pulling both sides, front, back, that is looking really nice. So just looking at the bark, it's not drying out, but I think we could actually stand to build this crust up a little bit further. So I'm not going to wrap this right now. If this is really dark and starting to look like it was drying out, that might uh, tempt me to wrap it. But since it looks pretty good and actually could take a little bit more smoke, I'm just gonna spray it and add a few more wood chips. Okay, let's take a look at our wood chip supply. So outside of one or two, most of those have burnt up. So it looks like it's burning better towards the middle and the back. So let's just add a couple more of those, especially where we can see some of that smoke and flames coming from. Add those back in. All right, the meter says our beef ribs are done. It is just say almost 3.30 in the afternoon. So I think these will be ready for about a two hour rest. Let's check for probe feel now. Oh, that's good. Love it. That feels really nice. So just when you let go, the probe is almost falling right through to the bones. So I think that is perfect. So now we wanna get these off, let them rest. So we can remove our meter probe. It's done its work. We're just going to transfer these over to the foil 
And I'm going to wrap them in foil now, but I'm actually gonna leave them outside where it's still quite cool. If, you're in a, if it was a little bit warmer, you could even just let these sit on a counter or something like that inside until the temperature starts to drop to about um, 190, 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we wrap them, uh, put them in a cooler wrapped in foil and let that rest. But it's cool enough outside, I can get away with wrapping these with foil right now and then let them sit outside for about 20, 30 minutes and then I'm gonna put them in the cooler. So we'll let those sit just like that, put them in a cooler and I'll rejoin you for the taste test in about two hours. All right, the wait is finally over after about six hours and change on the grill, two hours in the FTC, so foil, towel, towel and cooler for our rest. It is ready to slice in and see how we did. Let's come nice and close, dive in for our taste test. So I forgot to mention earlier, you see these are a four bone beef rib. So these are the chuck variety of beef ribs. So there's two types, there's chuck and there's plate ribs. So the chuck ones are a, fo a four bone rib. The plate ribs are a three bone. And the only difference here is if you think about the brisket is the four bone chuck is kind of like moving along from the flat into the point. So you're getting just a little bit of point whereas the plate ribs are more point. Uh, and so I tend to really like these ones because you get a good balance of intermuscular fat. But if you ever see the difference, that's the difference, chuck versus plate. Let's grab our knife and slice into these. Look at that, just, you see the juice is running there, great smoke color. Let's cut into our other beef ribs here. These look amazing. So I've got my eye on this guy. I really like how that is looking all rendered. Great smoke. Let's get it off the bone here. Nice clean pull. Cut a slightly more bite-sized piece. This looks good. Let's go in. I, I love beef ribs. Whether you call them dino bones, brisket on a stick, or just what they are, beef ribs. These are fantastic. I don't know if the bone does anything, but nature's own heat deflector, maybe it's just in my mind, but it adds something, something awesome. Plus, I as mentioned earlier, I wanted to compare the deconstructed salt, pepper, garlic, where we did the dry brine with just the salt and then added a binder versus doing it all before. I, I can't taste any difference from that brisket that I did yesterday with uh, the method of putting it all on ahead. So it's really just now, I think a matter of convenience, whatever suits your schedule in terms of what you're doing in your prep, I can't tell uh, a difference in terms of um, the same method where it's all on 24 hours in advance versus putting it on the day of the cook. What I can tell though, is just you're getting that way first, you get a bit of a gush of the fat. So just as it squeezes out, coats your tongue, it's warm and rich uh, and then beefy. Like that's really the highlight. That's the star of the show here is just that pure beef flavor. And then you get a little bit of the subtle notes of that, the salt, the garlic and the pepper. And that's just why I've been loving fresh cracked black pepper. If you get that little bit of zing that sort of immediately dissipates and especially balanced with all those other things that are going on here with the fat. And like always, whether it's steak or it's something like beef ribs, we are not tasting hot sauce, but there's a depth. I don't know if that's the right way to describe sort of the umami flavor, but there's just a, a characteristic that you can't quite figure out what's going on, but it's really, really good. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this beef rib 101 video. If you've never tried these before, I would do this ahead of brisket even, just because again, it's a little bit more resilient to temperature fluctuations. It's got that built-in heat shield. If your temperatures get away from you, uh, it's a little bit easier uh, to you know, manage you know, any overdoneness because of the bottom shield that those bones provide. And they're so good and about half the price versus brisket, again, much smaller but it's not quite that big step. So if you're looking for something to try first and you're between brisket and beef ribs, I would absolutely recommend giving these a go because once you're able to knock these out, 
and you'll be able to conquer brisket in no time. Let me know what you'd like to see next. And while you're down there, be sure to check out the members only section. I go live once a month with members. We can do this in a little bit more one-to-one -one conversational approach versus these pre-recorded videos. But if that's all you've got time for is one thing, make sure you hit that like button so YouTube knows to share this with other people and hit subscribe so you are alerted when a new video comes out. That's it for today though. I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. Oh, these are good. I love my job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.